I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. I specialize in games that can be played in 20 minutes or less, and this is my list of five games for moms to play. Uh, it is easy to find a game that the moms in your life will enjoy. You just need to have a good theme, and it should be a quick and easy game to play. Easier rules to pick up means that even if you are very tired and busy, uh, it's still easy and fun to get it to the table and actually play it. And then finally, no nonsense in the games. There is enough strife and conflict in your life already. Uh, it is nice to have a game that promotes uh, fun memories and family time, and then you'll actually want to play it on repeat. So I have the games listed in the description of the video along with a timestamp if you want to skip to a particular one. They are ranked from the easier games that are really for anyone are first, and then they get a little more challenging as you move along in the list. So let's get started. First up, we have the game Illusion, which is my go-to game for groups of moms hanging out together because all the game is, is you have a deck of cards and they have you flip over a color that you have to arrange the cards in order from. So you flip out a card and it, you have to do it according to red. And so then the next card you flip out, does it have more red or less red than the card that's already out there? You put it out and then the next one, you have to add that one in. Okay, does this have more or less or should I put it in the middle? And people keep on adding cards to the row of cards, hopefully in sequence by color. And eventually you stop when someone says one of these has to be out of order. And then that person doesn't play a card. You flip over all the cards and look at the percentages on the back of the cards. It'll say, okay, this one has 4%, 8%, 15%. Oh, 13%. Whoops, those two were messed up. And the deal is if one of the cards was messed up in order, then the person who called it gets to win a point. And if they were all correctly in sequence, then the person before them gets the point for having it all done correctly. And I love this game because it is such a simple premise, but it is so fun to play. And it takes uh, about zero instruction to get up and running. I've played this with groups of moms and I just say, Put them in core order of this and go. And it's so great. So you can chat during it. You could say, oh gosh, this is so tricky. And I love it because it's fun and interesting. And yet you do not feel dumb if you lose. It is competitive, but you don't feel dumb or like you did something wrong if you lose, which can be tricky with some of the competitive games. It's color perception. And if you're just a little bit off, ha ha, like, oh, I guess you couldn't tell that that was 5% instead of 4%. Like it's not anything to be embarrassed about or feel bad about that you got wrong. So it helps when you have some competitive people in the bunch kind of mitigate some of that, but it is really engaging and fun to play. And this has just been one of my go-tos. If you have a group of people together and they kind of want to chat, but have an activity while they're doing it, this is a great one for after like a Mother's Day brunch to get out and play with family. And it says it's up to five players, but you can play with more if you really want to kids can get on this in on this pretty well. So it just has a wide level appeal uh, for people who play a lot of games or people who don't, have, don't play many games at all. And it's a lot of fun every single time. Next up, we have Bloom. It's a cute dice game. You're just trying to get the most points. You roll the dice, pick a die, and circle the number of flowers that correspond to the number and the color of the die you chose. So easy, very fun. Uh, I like this game because it is so simple, but uh, strategic and interesting. It's uh, It has different types of garden beds or different, so you aren't just playing with the same board every time. I think it's A through E of different sheets that you can choose from to use. So that's nice. It mixes it up a little bit. So people aren't necessarily like, oh, this is the one clear one that I should be going for. And I love games like this because they are so quick and easy to learn. But because the gameplay is so you're just picking a die, it's it's not anything where somebody is backstabbing or trying to get the one that you want. And even if somebody doesn't really know what they're doing, they'll hang in there and figure something out and have a good time. They're not going to, it's not like something where they're just going to get blown out of the water and have somebody get twice as many points as them because they just did. So you're, you're going to be able to hang in and do well, even if you aren't really sure. Even if it's your first time through, you're going to do okay. But it's engaging enough that when you come back, you're like, ooh, maybe if I try this or if I go for this, 
Um, it's a very, uh, a lot of these ones are very rewarding for people that feel like they're checking off boxes. You're circling flowers and finishing, completing rows and different colors. So it does feel like you're accomplishing something as you play, which is really fun, but it's easy to learn, cute theme, and we have enjoyed it every time we've played. Next up, we have Similo. Similo has become one of the go-to hits in my house to play. And there are a few different versions of the games. You can pick whatever would appeal to the person who's gonna play the game. There are uh, fables, history, myths, spookies, and a couple different animal decks. And what you're trying to do is you, the person who gives the clues, you're working cooperatively, one person takes the deck, they pick a card at random, look at it, then they take another 11 cards out, shuffle them all up together, and lay out a tableau of cards that from those 12 cards, they're trying to get whoever's guessing to guess the correct card that they saw at the beginning. And there is no talking to give any clues. All you do is you take another five cards from the deck and with those cards, you either place them down vertically if they're like the card that you're trying to get them to guess or horizontally if they are not like the card that you're trying to get, the, get them to guess. That's it. And uh, each round you just have uh, five rounds. And the first round take out one, second, two, third, three, then the fourth, four cards. And then after that you're left with two and they just have to pick which one of those is the right card and if you get it right, you win. Um, if you're playing this with children, I would highly recommend playing with one of the animals decks. Uh, we got a few different versions uh, for Christmas for my family. And with kids, uh, they uh, seem to be the most familiar with and do the best with the animal decks. The other ones are very fun, but if you're playing with kids, get the animal decks. However, you can play this with adults. I would absolutely play this for an adult game night. Very fun. You can play this with a group of, with family for a family event uh, with whatever number you want, really, as long as you have one person giving clues and then people can kind of wander in and out, join the game later. It's not a big deal. It's one of those where it's really versatile and great in that respect. And that's where with adults, if you are doing things like, ooh, the fables, they have little information. They have information on the side of the cards. You can read up on them. Some of the mythological creature um, figures I wasn't familiar with, so it was handy to uh, be able to read on the side of the cards. So it's very interesting and because it's um it's ages seven and up but that doesn't mean it's a kid game you can play this as an adult and have a lot of fun but it's great and it and it is challenging just because it is a cooperative game doesn't mean it's some just like uh whatever huggy friend time game it is challenging it is difficult you'll look at some part of the card and think oh for sure they will focus on this and now they're focused on something else entirely. And it can, and so you have to really try to think like the person who's giving the clues or try to think, okay, what will they see from this card? So it is very challenging. And this is great for people who have played a lot of code names and want something a little bit different or maybe in a cooperative way. Uh, I play the cooperative version of code names, code names duet, which is very fun but is much more challenging and man, you better be on it. So this, I would say if you play regular code names and wanna have something else similar, but not quite as uh, challenging as code names duet, uh, then this is a really fun one and all of the different themes are really great and you can even mix the decks together and it's pretty cheap. They're just like uh, nine or 10 bucks per deck and they're available on Amazon. And so it's very easy to find and they are just a blast to play. Next up, we have Kim Joy's Magic Bakery, uh, which is a great British baking show inspired game. Uh, Kim Joy was one of my favorite contestants on the show. She was one of the ones, she was the one who made all the cute little woodland um, creatures on everything that she baked. And this game is spot on for the kind of bakes that Kim Joy made. And the gameplay works really well too. It is a cooperative game with uh, 10 different scenarios and you were trying to complete different challenges as you um, collect ingredients and work to prepare bakes um, for customers that are coming into your um, magical woodland shop. And so just the premise itself, super fun. Uh, the gameplay, 
I is is has a pretty good appeal for a wide range. I played this with my husband. I played this with my parents. I played this with my boys. But my daughter and I, uh, we played through the whole thing together and had it was it was so much fun playing through with her. And your the one thing I'd say is you're supposed to keep your uh, ingredient cards secret, but you're allowed to communicate anything you want about your hand to each other. And so we chose to communicate by laying them down so we could each see what we what we had because it just seemed to prolong the game. You could say what you had in your hand, but you weren't supposed to show it to them. Uh, so we just, it made it faster to just place them down and it was, it was the same amount of information they were allowed to have anyway. So I would say do that for a speedier, more efficient game, but it is challenging to go through and the, the scenarios do get increasingly challenging as you move along, but it's so fun. You're making things like a uh, raspberry pavlova, fondant fancies, shortbread biscuits. It's just all a bunch of super cute things. The, the graphics on it are adorable. So if you have someone in your life that loves Great British Baking Show, uh, you're going to have a lot of fun if you play this with them. And it's not over when you have the 10 different scenarios are completed. You can replay scenarios, you can combine different scenarios. So there's a lot you can do with this game, but it is adorable and it is fun and it is challenging as well, which is excellent. And finally, we have So Clover, which is a word game. You, everybody is given a clover type board and you're given four cards that have words around the outside. You plop them down in your board and on each side there are two words and you have a little uh, dry erase marker to write down one word that is a clue for the two words below it. Uh, once everybody's filled out their boards, you take, each person takes their individual cards off their board, adds in another random card, and then mixes them up, and then you take turns. This is a cooperative game. Uh, one at a time, you have the other people take the now five cards that are associated with your board, and they try to figure out, based on the clues written on the outside, how to put those cards back in where you had them originally when you were giving the clues. Uh, so it is, it is, it is difficult. It is fun, but it is difficult. It's neat that it's cooperative. This is a great game for somebody that loves code names or loves just one that's by the same publisher um, that came out with that, came out with So Clover, but wants a more like intense game experience because you sit there and you're like, these two words aren't related at all. In code names, I feel like you have a little more, there's so many different words that you're given at the beginning that define some to link them. You have some options there. And at the end, when you're like, oh gosh, this isn't related to anything. If you really want to, you can just give a one word clue to give a clue for that. But this is just whatever those two words are and you have to link them with just one word. So you can sit there. Uh, we've talked about before when we play games, like maybe you need um, like a little, like a time limit on some of these things because you can sit there and sit there and sit there. And if somebody isn't just going to like, I've got to write something down, you might not have to have something to help them. But it, so, so it is challenging. That's why it's last on the list. But it is so much fun. And it is neat that it's a cooperative experience. Uh, for uh, kind of a social game, but that it is intense and competitive. A lot of times you get these social games and you're like, oh, okay, apples to apples. Well, at least we did something together because nothing against apples to apples, but it's not like, oh, I played this game and I had to really think about thing and it was strategic and interesting and I had to try this, but I wasn't sure about this. Uh, it's just cute and fun. Uh, this is an option to play a social game where you're like, oh man, this was tricky. I really had to figure something out, but it is still fun and kind of lighthearted, you know, like people can, but I also, a lot of times you hear, one of the, my favorite parts of this is when the group is discussing where to put the words and you see the reaction of the person who gave the clues and they're just clearly dying on the inside because you're so far off or you're taking things in a completely different direction. A friend said her daughter has to uh, leave the room when they play this because she cannot handle them, you know, just like, no, no, clearly I didn't think about it like that. 
the it has to go with the mountains goes by the Alps. Like, why wouldn't you put those two together? Uh, so they have to. So know your audience for this one. But just whenever we've played this with a group of it helps if it's a group of adults because the more the better your vocabulary is, the better you will do for this. Younger kids, if you don't know enough words that will pair two things together. It can it can be a struggle unless you work on a team with an adult, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, but for an adult game, for something that's cooperative but strategic and engaging, it is just an absolute blast to play. It has rave reviews and we love it. So that's it for my board games for mom list. Uh, board games can be the best time if you pick the right one for your audience that you're playing with. So hopefully you found one from here that'll be a hit. And thank you so much. We'll see you next time from Game Like a Mother.